I'd like to call the May 4th, 2020 special meeting for the adoption of the 2020-2021 budget to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening, Lacey Township. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have a good evening. And that was Jake Serrano. Thank you, Jake, for doing the Pledge of Allegiance for us tonight. Adequate notice of this meeting was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Beacon on January 16th, 2020, and as amended on April 30th, 2020, and by posting the notice in the Fork of River Post Office and the Lanoka Harbor Post Office, the Ocean County Library, Lacey Branch, and by filing a copy of the notices with the Lacey Township Clerk as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. Mr. DeGeorge, roll call, please. Mr. Scanley. Here. Mr. Peters. Present. Mrs. McAvoy. Present. Mr. Polino. Present. Mrs. DeSensa. Present. Mr. Riggs. Present. Mrs. Downey. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. DeGeorge. At this time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to our superintendent, Dr. Clark. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our public hearing. Um, on a beautiful spring day, finally. Uh, some amazing weather we've had for the last couple of days. Uh, before we get into uh, the budget conversation, um, I did want to extend uh, a huge thank you to our teachers and staff. Today marks <clears throat> day one of Teacher Staff Appreciation Week. Uh, I just sent an email out to all of our teachers and our staff and uh, I don't want to ruin the surprise, so I'm not going to give it away, but um, the principals, uh, the administrative team, and the board members have a surprise plan for our teachers that uh, we hope will be finished toward the end of the week. So that's all I'm going to say. Um, and I also wanted to mention that last Friday was National Principals Day, so I wanted to recognize all of the hard work of, of our principals, but the entire administrative team. Uh, as we said at the last board meeting, this has been some challenging times. And as uh, most of you probably know, Governor Murphy made an announcement today that schools will be closed for the remainder of the year. So we have a little bit more direction um, and we will be posting some information on our website with regard to um, the closure of school, even though that is the announcement, but there's a lot of uh, planning that's gonna go into that um, with, with a big focus on graduation and year-end activities. So I know parents are anxious for that information, uh, and so we will get that out as soon as we have some plans finalized. And with that, um, let's get into um, the budget. So as we all know, the purpose of tonight's board meeting is to present and, and approve the final budget. So if you recall, Mr. George began this discussion back in September, outlining the budget process and the steps necessary uh, that we take uh, as a board, as a district, as an administration um, to arrive at the final budget, which is what brings us to tonight's presentation. Uh, so, Mr. Lytle, if we could get that uh, slide deck up. <clears throat> okay, and we can go to the next slide. Okay, so as you all know, this is a conversation that we've had for uh, quite some time. What is the issue? State aid, or lack thereof, I should say. Um, so as you can see in this slide, the impact of S2 was tremendous um, and increased our overall budget deficit more than expected. I wish I had better news, but as you can see in the following year and the year after that, it doesn't look a whole lot better. Um, 
but we're dealing with uh, the 2020-21 um, school year and our state aid loss was $1.3 million, which forced us to make some cuts, which we are going to review momentarily. Next slide. So let's for a moment talk about our mission statement. This is the current mission statement of the Lacey Township School District, which was board approved on July 21st, 2008. Uh, last October, we started the strategic planning process. And one of the things that uh, we're working on is to develop a new mission statement. And we made some pretty good progress. Uh, unfortunately, because of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, it has uh, forced us to go in a little bit of a different direction with regard to strategic planning, but we hope to continue that process uh, in the summer. And we'll see how that goes. One of the things that I, I wanted to point out is that even in this uh, current mission statement, you can see that student achievement is and will continue to be the district's top priority. And that is also very uh, visible in the new mission statement that uh, we've developed. And again, it's not uh, final, um, but we'll see um, how that goes and how quickly it is that we're going to be able to present the new strategic plan uh, to the board and then uh, of course to the public. Um, so again, the process of uh, getting to tonight, um, we can go to the next slide, Mr. Lytle. The process uh, to get to tonight involved uh, the entire board who you see here uh, this evening, but also up on your screen. Uh, and again, um, the entire administrative team. Next slide. All right, so let's talk about the path from tentative to final. Um, this slide is a, is a representation of the path that the board and the district has taken from the tentative budget uh, presented on March 18th to tonight's final budget. And I'm going to talk about these cuts in a moment. I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, take a step back and talk about the cuts that we made in the tentative budget. Um, so again, in March, we approved the tentative budget, which included the reduction of 15.6 certificated staff members. Eight of those um, are from absorptions or I can say retirement. So it's through attrition. The elimination of one administrator, the elimination of uh, the enrichment program, the elimination of the twilight program, reduction in after school activities and the late bus, the elimination of courtesy busing, the elimination of the class three officer program, the addition of one school safety officer, and that's in response to the elimination of the class three program, and the elimination of district paid student accident insurance. So as we all know, the path from tentative to final is never a linear road. And we had to add additional cuts uh, that include the items that you see on this slide, and that is the reduction in Board of Education meeting expenses, uh, reduction in the allocation for medical benefits, the elimination of the SAP boot camp, an additional reduction in, uh, additional reductions, I should say, in instruction, instructional supplies and classroom furniture, the additional reduction in clubs and activities. So if you recall earlier, I said that in our tentative budget, we had already made a reduction in clubs and activities. What you see on the screen here is additional uh, reductions in clubs and activities. And then finally, um, the elimination of one assistant coaching position. Um, Mr. DeGeorge is going to uh, take over at this point and going to outline uh, where that leaves us in terms of the final budget. Mr. DeGeorge. Thank you, uh, Dr. Clark. Next, please. Before we dive into the details, it's important to say another word about the difference between the tentative and the final versions of the budget. The advertised budget that you see in the newspaper and on our website is the tentative budget. Why? Because it is the only uh, actual approved budget that we have before we have this meeting tonight. In a few moments, we will approve the aforementioned additional reductions, and after that, we will have 
the final post revision budget. So 2021 uh, versus 2020 revised to actual. That's what you're looking at right now. If you remember from part one of our budget training back in September, we said that there are basically three types of budgets within the school district. Uh, and you see them, the operating budget or the lion's share of the budget, uh, known as the general fund budget, grants and entitlements, and the debt service budget. So you'll notice that the operating budget decreased one point, almost 1.5% from the current year. Uh, grants are reduced 25% or so. Debt service almost 1% lower for a total uh, of a 2% decrease from year to year. Next, please. At 93% of the total budget, 93%, we focus our attention on the operating budget, or as I said, the general fund budget. Next, please. So let's take a look at revenue. Next, please. We see here presented the same seven categories that we've seen in every budget year. These are the categories for revenue for a public school district in New Jersey. So let's take a look over the next few slides at each of the categories in detail. Next, please. Property taxes account for 69% of operating revenue. Please remember that number for later on. The operating or general fund portion of the levy will increase 2.79% from the current year. However, the debt service portion of the property tax levy will decrease 1.58%. So the net will be an increase of 2.52%. In an effort to keep the increase as low as possible, the board decided not to use 100% of the bank cap to which it is entitled. The $300,000 that is unused, you will see in a few moments, will be reduced from the, uh, from the revenue side of the budget, but it cannot be used at this point uh, for future years. Next, please. State aid accounts for 26% of operating revenue. So you can see 95% of our revenue comes from property taxes and state aid. Very important later on. We already heard Dr. Clark speak about the continued impact of S2 on state aid. Enough said there. Next, please. As required by law, the district will use 100% of the 2018-2019 school year excess surplus in this coming 2020-2021 budget. Funds will be used to purchase curriculum needed to bring up the districts to uh, the New Jersey student learning standards. Next, please. $980,000 will be withdrawn from the capital reserve to fund the only capital project we will undertake in the coming school year, which is the replacement of the original 1986 boilers in the original section of our high school. $300,000 will be withdrawn from the maintenance reserve account to help fund the required maintenance portion of budgeted appropriations. Next, please. The other side of our budget, appropriations, or what is referred to as the spending plan. Next, please. Again, this is the 2020-2021 budget versus the 2019-2020 revised to actual budget. As required, revenues on back on slide nine equal the appropriations uh, presented on the coming slide 16. The data presented, it's important to know, on this and the next slide are the official Department of Education categories you will find in the advertised budget made available to you via our website. So let's take a closer look at uh, some of these appropriations. 
This data is presented by program or category. For example, and as you can see, regular or general education instruction, special education instruction, tuition, guidance, administration, and so on. Each program presented contains all of the costs associated with that program, salaries, services, and so on. So let's talk about some of the programs here on the first page, for instance. But before we do that, let's take a word about salaries. Uh, again, salaries are interspersed throughout all of the categories you're going to see on the next few slides. Salaries continue to consume uh, at $41.9 million in the coming budget, 58%, 58% of the operating budget. So let's talk about the general uh, education instruction, the very first line. We think that will increase, uh, we budget that that will increase 345,000 or 1.68%. Why? The contractual increase in salaries will be offset by the aforementioned by Dr. Clark elimination of positions, as well as the slight decrease, further decrease in instructional supplies. Special education instruction will increase about $75,000 or 1%. The increase is due to a contractual increase in salaries, which will be offset by the aforementioned elimination of positions, uh, not special education classroom per se or programs, but within the resource room category, as well as a slight decrease in instructional supplies as well. Co-curricular athletics down about $38,000 or 2.42%. Again, a contractual increase in salaries, will be offset by what Dr. Clark already told us, the elimination of some clubs and activities, as well as the elimination of an additional assistant coach. Tuition, up about $420,000 or 20%. Private school tuition rates continue to rise and we are told that they will increase 10% in the coming year. In addition, we project that between out of district students and the McKinney-Vento uh, students that we will have an increase in the number of students that we need to pay tuition for in the coming school year. Related services, increase $90,000 or just over 9.5%. The projected increase in the cost of related service is in line with the aforementioned projected increase in the number of special education students. It just makes sense. Child study team, increase about $51,000 or a little over 4% because of a contractual increase in salaries and an increase in the ABA and social skills services. Next, please. Administration, decreased by about $79,000 or 2%. As Dr. Clark said, uh, that is mainly because we will eliminate one of our administrative positions uh, through absorption and retirement. Technology, decrease $36,000 or about 5%. A contractual increase in salaries is offset by a slight decrease in the cost of internet and uh, the wide area network. Transportation, increase of about $185,000 or 5%. Again, this is in line with the uh, projected increase in the cost of added district tuition, which we spoke about on the previous slide. Benefits. Benefits, medical, prescription, dental, terminal leave, pension liability, workers' compensation insurance, payroll taxes, et cetera, et cetera. This accounts for almost $17.3 million, or 24% of our operating budget. Taken together, if you remember from a few seconds ago, salaries and benefits can account for $59.2 million or 82% of our operating budget. We are projecting a 673,000 or almost 4% decrease in all benefits for next year. Why? Here is what we project will increase. There'll be a $70,000 or about 10% increase in workers' compensation insurance because of market rates. There'll be an increase of $62,000 or 
or 177% for our pension liability for our DCRP pensioners. It'll be about a $20,000 or 2% increase in the cost of payroll taxes related directly to the increase in salaries. Uh, and then finally, a $10,000 or 18% increase in the payment to staff who retire for unused sick leave. So what will decrease? $108,000 or 10% decrease in our pension liability for the PERS uh, or non-certificated pensioners. And uh, a decrease of about $700,000 or 5% in the cost of medical prescription and dental benefits related mostly to the reductions in staff that Dr. Clark spoke of. And finally, capital outlay down 1.6 million or 55%. Uh, as I mentioned before, next year we will have only one capital project. The uh, mentioned replacement of the 1986 boilers in the high school. Next, please. Because we can't physically revise the Department of Education web-based budget program until tomorrow, the per pupil data that you see here is not quite correct. I'll explain. The total cost per pupil, once we remove the $300,000 in additional appropriations, will decrease about $75, which will bring it below uh, the average, statewide average of $16,350. In addition, the administrative cost per pupil will be about $60 per pupil less, which will bring it even further below the state average. Next, please. So let's talk about the impact of all of this on the local taxpayer. Next, please. As I said earlier, the property tax levy has two components. One, the operating or the general fund levy component, and two, the debt service component. Next, please. The first question we need to answer is what is the tax rate for the school, uh, the school tax rate? And this is the formula that we've used every year. We take the total taxes, again, it's all of the taxes uh, that we will ask uh, taxpayers to pay next year, the general fund and the debt service portion. We will divide that by the total assess current valuation of everything in town, which we get from the district tax assessor, and then we uh, multiply the result by 100, and that is the school tax rate. So let's take a look at that. Next, please. The total taxes to be raised in the operating budget is just over 49.5 million, and the total taxes to be raised on the debt service portion is just over 3.1 million, for just about a $53 million total tax levy. When you divide that by the current valuation, which we got from the taxpayer, uh, from the tax assessor of almost 4 billion, you get 0.01345 multiplied times 100, and you get the school tax rate for next year of 1.345. Remember that number. Next, please. What about the individual taxpayer? How does he or she determine the school's, uh, his or her portion of the school tax for next year? You take the assessed value of your home and you can get that from the tax assessor. Divide it by 100, multiply it times 1.345 and that will be the taxes that you will pay, the school portion of the tax for next year. So let's look at a year-over-year -year illustration of that. Next, please. From the tentative to the final budget, you can see that uh, the average home value, which the, again the tax assessor provides to us, will in has increased about $1,300 since last year. Uh, the tax rate itself has increased uh, 0 0.023. Uh, if you're scoring in tax pennies, that's uh, 2.3 tax pennies and uh, about $81.49 for the year. 
$6.79 increase for uh, the month. So important to note before we move to the next slide is that between the tentative and the final budget, uh, I know you see this, that the tax rate decreased as well as the taxes to be paid uh, by the local taxpayer. How much? Well, the tax rate decreased from the tentative budget to the final budget by seven one thousandths, 0 0.007. Uh, the annual tax uh, decreased $19.56 from uh, the tentative budget or $1.63 uh, per month. <clears throat> next, please. So what's next? May 6th is the deadline to post what's called the user-friendly budget to the district website. On the main page of our website right now, you can see the user-friendly budget for this 2019-2020 school year right on the main page. By May 14th, uh, we will submit the final budget to the Department of Education. July 1st, two things happen, and they happen July 1st because, as uh, Dr. Clark and I keep saying, uh, budgeting is a 12-month year process. Uh, the 2021 uh, budget is enacted and we begin immediately on the 2021-2022 budget process. Next, please. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks to the board, most especially for putting its uh, effort into Dr. Clark and Mr. Decker for, for helping create this uh, final budget. This presentation will be posted to the district website tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Clark, that is all that I have. Okay, thank you, um, Mr. DeGeorge. I too do not have uh, any other comments to make other than uh, to just keep an eye out for some updates regarding uh, the governor's announcement today. And uh, President Downing, that concludes uh, my comments for the evening. Thank you, Dr. Clark. And thank you, Mr. DeGeorge for the presentation. Thank you very much. At this time, we're gonna move into public comments. And before I turn it over to Mr. Merman, this public comments will be um, function just as if we were in a regular board meeting at the school. An audience member wishing to make a comment um, will raise his hand or her hand as Mr. Merman will explain in a few minutes. Comments shall be addressed to the board president. They shall be made one issue at a time. Comments shall be limited to five minutes. And um, no audience member will be recognized twice until all who wish to comment have been recognized. So at this time, Mr. Merman, I'm gonna turn the public comment over to you to facilitate. Thank you, Mrs. Downing. At Thank this you. time, we will be accepting public comment. The time limit for public comment is five minutes per speaker. You will be allowed to speak a second time when everyone else has completed their comments, should you choose to do so. Anyone who would like to comment at this time is instructed to virtually raise your hand by hovering your mouse over the Zoom view screen and finding the raise your hand button in the bottom of your Zoom app. You will be called to unmute your microphone and speak in turn. Heather Scanlon, please unmute your microphone, state your name and address, and begin your public comment. Ms. Scanlon, if you can hear us, you did not unmute your microphone. You have to unmute your microphone to speak, please. How's that? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, Heather. Thank you. Please state your name and address. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Heather Scanlon. I live in the Barnaby Pine session section but I'm really addressing you tonight on behalf of the Municipal Alliance uh, because uh, not, we're very disappointed about the elimination of a student assistant counselor out of the budget. Uh, and this is not the first time that this has happened that we've become, come before the board. In 2011, 
a similar situation scenario occurred. And we did speak to the board in, in June of 2011, requesting that the position be reinstated. Uh, but let me just have, a, if I may, a few things about a student assistance counselor. The research indicates that about one in four children are affected by somebody else's substance abuse. And by addressing these problems in the home, such as substance abuse, it could be domestic abuse, but through an intervention, it's been shown to prevent substance abuse and academic failure, of course. A student assistance coordinator is trained and educated to address these issues properly, where other role models, teachers, and counselors may fall short. The SAC teaches the students about the disease of addiction, how to communicate their feelings, and how to cope with family illness. With the SAC, students are able to overcome the impact of substance abuse in their lives and hopefully be more able to succeed both academically and socially. They're able to discuss these serious issues without any stigma or embarrassment. For students, knowing that counseling is confidential helps the child open up without fear of what will happen to them if it becomes known that they are discussing their very private and scary issue. I would also like to add that this period of isolation due to the pandemic will adversely affect those students also who are already at risk for substance abuse issues. The elimination of a student assistant coordinator we feel is short-sighted and will have a detrimental impact on some of our most vulnerable students. We urge you to reinstate the position of the student assistance coordinator. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Scanlon. Anne Marie Leiter, please unmute your microphone, state your name and address, and begin your public comment. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm Anne Marie Leiter. I live on Carriage Way um, out in the woods. How are you guys doing tonight? Thanks for doing this virtually. So I came late to the meeting. Um, I have three questions. So I'll, I don't know, am I allowed to like just go with all three or do I do one at a time? I understand it's like one thing and then everybody has to talk. And I don't even know if it's a question like that you guys can answer. So should I just, it's three, pretty easy ones why don't you say why don't you say all three and then we'll break them up into all right thanks have, okay thank you miss downing you're welcome so um the first one is what clubs are being cut and from what schools um the other one i saw that the um, sat boot camp which my junior now junior daughter was enrolled in got obviously didn't happen um, so the boot camp, I, we were looking forward to, especially that it was free. Um, and will there be another one? And then um, with the closure of school until the end of the school, you know, school's done, uh, brick and mortar, will the kids be able to get their personal items out of the schools? I'm sure you guys are going to work on something similar to um, like uh, the Chromebooks, the distribution of the Chromebooks. and. Those are my questions for today. Okay, good questions. Dr. Clark, do you want to address that? Sure. Um, and I was actually going to address Mrs. Scanlon, but I couldn't unmute my microphone fast enough. So um, Ms. I will come back to uh, Mrs. Scanlon's uh, comment. But um, Ms. Letter, with regard to your questions, good questions, uh, let me start with, I believe you asked what clubs and at what schools. Was that your question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So um, the reduction of the clubs and activities are across all six schools. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, we're still working on finalizing that list and trying to make some decisions um, on whether they were the right decisions. And so um, I'm gonna, I, Mr. Decker and I continue to meet with our principals. Um, but to just give you an example of some that come to mind, um, the fitness club 
um, at the schools where that was taking place, that's an elimination. Um, the Garden Club at Mill Pond is another one that comes to mind. You know, unfortunately, I don't have the list here in front of me, um, and the list is rather long, unfortunately, and so I couldn't possibly go through the entire thing. But once we have uh, the list finalized and the principals can start making some alternative plans, uh, we will certainly begin to share that with our families and come up with some perhaps creative ideas on what we can do instead. Um, so we are working on that. So that was your first question. The qu second question you had was about the SAT boot camp. Um, and I know you were looking forward to it, but uh, what we've decided to do there is to just revisit the way we introduce or deliver SAT um, lessons to our students. And one of the ideas, and I'm not saying that this is definitely what we're going to do, but one of the ideas that we had is to attempt to incorporate um, an SAT boot camp into the school day so that it's not before school or after school. Uh, and so really it's just rethinking how uh, we were doing SAT boot camp. Okay. Um, so yes, there will be another one. It's just going to look different. Okay. Um, and then as far as your last question goes, uh, that's also a very complicated question, especially given that we just learned today that um, school will be closed for the remainder of the year. So we have a lot to plan for. Um, we've already begun uh, a re-entry plan for September. We're not entirely sure uh, what that means for summer programs. I know the recreation department is struggling a little bit, um, but we have to make plans for how it is that we're going to uh, collect our Chromebooks because the summer is the time when we service them so that we can redistribute them uh, come September. And then as far as how student, uh, students can come back in and get their personal belongings. I mean, we're going on the assumption that the majority of students took the majority of their belongings, um, but the principal, uh, once we um, get back into a more um, regular schedule, I should say, uh, they can do an inventory of what their buildings look like and what kind of access students would have to have. And of course, that is going to rely heavily on uh, future announcements that the governor makes because what we don't know and this is playing a little bit too into our plans for uh, year-end events is you know is the executive order going to stay in place the executive order being the one that prohibits uh, groups to gather uh, more than 10 um, and so if the executive order stays as is um, having students come into the building is going to be a little bit more challenging for us and may not be something that um, we'll want to do. Uh, but again, all of these things, given his announcement today, uh, is going to go into planning. In fact, my day is full tomorrow starting at uh, 7.30 a.m. with meetings uh, because, you know, we're also interested in what other school districts are doing. Um, and so I'll, I'll be meeting with superintendents um, and then, of course, our own administrators uh, every day, probably from now until the end of the year. So hopefully that answered all three of your questions. Yes, it did. And thank you guys very much. I'm, as you guys keep saying, it's uncharted territory and there's so much, um, you know, relying on the what ifs. So you guys are doing a great job. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Slider. Thank you. And then, uh, Mr. Downing, if I may, I... Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I just wanted to go back to Mrs. Scanlon's uh, comment. So first of all, thank you, Mrs. Scanlon, for making the comment. Um, and one of the, the things that is part of our reentry plan is to analyze uh, the needs for the mental health of not only uh, our staff members, but obviously for our students. And so uh, the board and the administration will certainly take your comment into consideration as we plan for that. So thank you for that. Okay, Kelly Milano, please unmute your microphone, state your name and address, and begin your public comment. Hello, um, Kelly Milano, 462 Commodore Drive, Fork and River. Um, I'm the current acting president of the Lacey CPAG, the Special Education Parent Advisory Group. Um, first of all, I wanna thank all the teachers and staff 
everyone that I've come across has done such an incredible job um, during this time and just a total special thanks. Forked River School, phenomenal. Mill Pond, great. Thank you so much. Um, Last year, there were significant cuts made to the special education department. My question is, out of the 15.6 staff members being cut, eight are retiring, um, so that leaves 7.6 staff members to be cut. How many are from the special education and or resource room department? Um, and I also have another question. <laughs> um, as I was uh, listening to the budget, um, I noticed that under per pupil costs, um, it costs more to educate a child with special needs. Um, why does the budget depict only per pupil costs and it's not broken down to depict um, special needs versus an average student's cost? That's a good question. Mr. DeGeorge, would you like to answer that? Uh, yes. So um, thank you for making your comment and for doing all the great work you do with the uh, CPAG, uh, extremely <laughs> important for families. Uh, in the current uh, cut of the budget, where is one, two, four, I see four uh, reductions in the resource room and uh, no reductions uh, in the regular programs uh, for special education. For your second question, you're right. There are dozens of per pupil uh, computations available within the budget itself. So when everything is posted to the budget, you will see uh, more and more uh, per pupil budget information uh, that will speak to special education students and so on and so forth. All of that will be made available to you. We'll put all of that on the district website uh, and you're right, we just do the two because we think it's just the most uh, the most popular, the most uh, relevant total cost to in, educate a, an average student uh, and what does it cost per pupil for administrative costs. But you're right, there are, there are many and you'll see uh, the many when we post the information to our district website. Okay, thank you. Did you say that three um, staff members were being cut from resource room? Or that seems like a lot. Um, how are they going to absorb that and make up for that? There probably hasn't been a reduction in the needs of those students. Dr. Clark, can you answer so, that or? Yep, I'm gonna, again, I was unmuting my microphone. Uh, yes, I will answer that. So um, the comment you just made uh, was very interesting. You said that there are probably aren't changes in uh, special ed numbers. But when there are transitions, fourth to fifth, sixth to seventh, and then eighth to ninth, um, the needs and the numbers uh, change. And so we're co constantly paying attention to um, making sure that we're in compliance with regard to student special ed teacher ratios. And so, in the cases where um, we're reducing our resource room numbers, it is because the numbers um, of students going into a particular class are changing. And in many cases, it's also shuffling our teachers around, especially those who are certified in both regular education and special education. And so if we have a teacher um, who is teaching regular ed and we've reduced that position, we may perhaps move that teacher into special ed or vice versa based on needs. Um, but all of those things were taken into consideration and we certainly uh, would never make these kinds of decisions and not be able to service our special education population. Thank you so much. Thank and thank you, you for all that you all do. Thank you so much. Thank you, stay well. You too. Thank you. Okay, Dee Bahujian, please unmute your microphone, state your name and address, and begin your public comment. Hi, Dee Bahujian, Forked River. Uh, so, 
Mr. DeGeorge, while you were going over the budget, um, showed that the went back and you cut three hundred thousand dollars more out of the budget, um, and that the increase in taxes is six point six dollars and seventy nine cents a month. Correct. Um, that was the decrease. Uh, yes, yes. The let me go back to the to the slide deck. Yes, that is correct. Uh, it's six dollars seventy nine cents a month, which, as I said, is a uh, dollar sixty three per month less because of the three hundred thousand dollars cut. Okay, so if you were to add that three hundred thousand dollars that you cut back into the budget, how much more would that cost the average tax paying family a month? Another dollar sixty three, so that would be uh, added back. Yes. Okay, so if you were to add that back, could you maybe save some of the clubs or maybe um, one of the special ed teachers that you're gonna cut? Could you save one of the two of those positions if you were to add that back for $1.63 a month? It doesn't uh, there seem would be a number of possibilities, that being among them, I would suppose, but that would take as much discussion as it took to get from where we were to where we are now. Okay, I just want to know everyone to know that for a dollar sixty three what what we could have and my other question was um, the special ed positions that you're cutting there's four of them. Can you tell us which schools would be affected? Yes uh, um, I will and I will oh I'm sorry go ahead Mr. DeGeorge. I was gonna say there are uh, it's three at the high school and one at the mill pond school and are there any other services from special ed being cut? No. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for your comments. Thank you, Dee. Okay, I don't see anybody else with their hands raised at this time, but if you would like to get in for a public comment, just keep in mind that you could. Um, put your mouse over your uh, Zoom app or your web browser, and there's a raise your hand button down at the bottom. If I don't see any more in about 15 seconds, we will move on with the rest of the meeting. And we will wait, Mr. Merman. I did see one hand go up for a second for Mr. Rizzoli, then back down again. So I'll give it a couple more seconds here. If anybody would like to speak, you do want to put your hand up. Okay, um, Mrs. Downing, seeing none. Okay, thank you, Mr. Merman. <clears throat> so we will move on to the agenda now, number seven on the agenda. Could I have a motion and move that the board amend the tentative budget for the 2020 2021 school year as listed on the paper. Move. There a second? I'll second it. Who was that? Mr. Skip? Peters. Okay. Roll call, please, Mr. DeGeorge. Mr. Scanlon. Uh, before I vote, I just want to make a statement again that uh, I support the budget the way it was before. I believe that if we did restore the $300,000 and keep the, keeping in mind that the $62,000 that was cut by the uh, committee um, is very appropriate, it works. Uh, but if we refunded, re restored the money, we would be using our bank cap, which otherwise we'll lose. If we don't use that, we're sending a message to the state that we don't need the money. And when it comes time for them to disperse funds next year, they're going to look back and they're going to say, well, uh, maybe we can cut more from Lacey again. Last year, they, they added cuts. That's what you're looking at in the future if you don't use the money. So I'm going to be voting no on this change. I will continue to vote no on the budget also, because I believe that we should be using the money and we should be restoring the SAC and the, um, the other positions that were cut. Thank you. 
Okay, so you're voting no for the um, to amend the tentative budget. That's Number correct. Seven. No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Peters. Uh, I am going to vote yes. We've worked extremely hard on this budget. Uh, Mr. DeGeorge and Dr. Clark gave us plenty of feedback on um, the decisions that we were making. Uh, I've collaborated with a couple other board members, making cuts every possible cut we could to save the taxpayer every possible penny that we possibly could. I'm voting yes. Thank you. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Mr. Polino. Yes. Mrs. DeSensa. No. Mr. Riggs. Yes. Mrs. Downey. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so now moving on to number eight. We need a motion that the board adopt the budget for the 2020-2021 school year. On your, on your agenda, it may say tentative. That's a mistake, just cross it out. Move that the board adopt the budget for the 2020-2021 school year. Roll call, please. Can I have a motion, please? I move it. Second, please. I'll second it, Mr. Peters. Uh, Mr. Scanlon. With all due respect to the people who worked very hard on finding those cuts and making those cuts, which I do agree with them, I'm going to vote no because I think that we should be using all the money available to us. Thank you. Mr. Peters. Yes. Mrs. McAvoy. Yes. Mr. Polino. Yes. Mrs. Densa. No. Mr. Riggs. I agree with Mr. Scanlon, but I'm going to say yes. Mrs. Downey. I too. I agree exact, um, absolutely with Ed over um, the bank cap, that money, but I am voting yes for this budget. Uh, motion carries. That is all I have, Mrs. Downey, as far as resolutions. Okay. Thank you. So we're going to move on then to board comments. I'm going to start from left to right at our table if we were sitting at school at the school. So we're going to start with Mr. Peters tonight. Thank you, President Downing. I just want to say um, we've worked diligently on this budget. I see what Mr. Scanlon's saying. Um, we've went through this thing with a fine tooth and comb to pick and, and choose, and it was very tough decisions. And um, I think we have more decisions coming up like this uh, in the future. Um, we're trying to do whatever we can for the taxpayer and for the, what's best for the students. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Polino. Yes, thank you. I want to thank uh, Dr. Clark, Mr. DeGeorge, Mr. Decker, and administrators for working diligently on this uh, budget. Also, uh, my fellow board members uh, for their hard work in the committee. And I do want to add that <clears throat> Uh, that three hundred some thousand dollars that was found um, to bring a new tentative budget that wasn't just found the money that could be used somewhere else that was taken out of uh, cuts out of other places so if we were to reinstate that money it would go back to where it came from so it wasn't just found money um, so as much as I would like to see some programs like the class three officer program reinstated the SAC counselor uh, and things like that in other clubs again that, that wasn't found the money um, and, and even if it was it had to go back to where it belonged. So we've cut some things um, uh, to get that $300,000 and we've taken some chances with that, um, uh, betting on some things that are gonna happen next year. So uh, again, it wasn't uh, you know walking down the street and we just found this extra $300,000 and decided to throw it away and not use it on anything. So that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McAvoy. Hi, I just wanted to say I'm content with the budget. I think we worked very, very hard and we kept the students academics at the foremost we didn't cut any academic programs and we cared about the students and we cared about the taxpayers i do agree that we have to look closely at the re-entry program because mental health is so very very important to the students the staff the whole community so i know dr clark i have trust and faith in her that the re-entry program will um 
oh, my alarm's going off. We'll think about the reentry program and how it will affect the mental health of students. Thank you. Better go check your alarm. I know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Mrs. DeSenza. Yes, thank you. Good evening and thank you everyone for tuning in on Zoom. When we were on the senior caravan tour on April 23rd, I don't know if anyone else noticed, but I saw many empty foreclosed homes on almost every street. Notices were posted in the front windows and the homes obviously vacated. These are the people that have abandoned Lacey Township because it became unaffordable. Doesn't this send a message to the board? I heard the message. Did everyone miss all those empty houses? I didn't. Yet we wonder why our student enrollment has decreased. People have left this town and the state and many school aged children went with them as well. For all those over the barrel trying to pay a mortgage in taxes, my no vote on this budget is for all the people that can't afford it. We the board are public officials accountable to the taxpayers and we have an inherent fiduciary obligation to both the students and the taxpayers. I want the students to have the best possible educational programs, but there is a huge difference between wants and needs. The New Jersey Department of Education Emergent Aid Denial Letter dated December 2019 Denial reason number nine was substantial raises to all three collective bargaining units. I'm not saying that our teachers are highly paid, but the raises that were given during the last contract period were unaffordable. I am a realist. We must face the harsh reality of this economic climate. For the last five years, that's all I hear from the public, taxes, taxes, taxes. I've walked to over 7,000 homes in this township People are angry and they are afraid to speak up, but I am not afraid to say it for them. No more taxes, please. This is not a private school district, yet we try to operate like one. Next year will be worse than this year. Sooner or later, more major cuts will be coming. It's time for everybody to face up to the reality of the world economic climate that we are now in. The state of New Jersey is almost bankrupt Shifting more tax burden to the New Jersey taxpayers is just irresponsible. More than 68% of the local property tax burden is for the school tax. In my opinion, that's enough. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. Uh, <clears throat> well, I just uh, guess it would be pretty obvious to the casual observer that Ms. Mrs. DeSenza no vote and my no vote come from pretty opposite directions. And uh, I would just say that I don't believe that $19 a year was going to cause further job losses or um, loss of homes. We all agree to disagree. I appreciate and thank my fellow board members for the work they did, for the time they put into it, the efforts and their uh, very good intentions. And we will work with this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Riggs. So I, I don't understand um, uh, underfunding uh, something as critical as a school or, or an institution that we need uh, doesn't make any sense to me on any level because we're in the middle of uh, something right now and, and nobody really knows where we're all going with this stuff. But on the other side of it, um, you know, we've heard last meeting and this meeting, we've heard people say, um, you know, how could you, how could you do this or how could you do that? Um, it all has to be there on the other side, though. We're still going to need police departments. We're still going to need uh, municipal, uh, everything that we have in towns. We're still going to need fire departments and we're certainly going to need schools for kids to come back to. Underfunding them now or um, cutting more things out of it. Uh, it just, just seemed like a bad plan overall. Yes, I understand things are going on right now, but uh, the schools have to be there when it's all said and done and they have to be running properly and the kids are going to be, uh, if anything, a step behind. So we have to hit the ground running here when they come back in. Now it's, I guess it's going to be September. Um, and on a side note of that, basically the same thing, just a um, heartfelt appreciation to all the teachers and administrators. It is um, Teacher Appreciation Week. So you guys are in a whole nother world out there right now trying to do these things with the kids over the computer. So um, 
yeah, it's appreciated. We all really, uh, we all really do. We all thank you for everything. So that's all I have. Thank you, President Donald. Thank you, Mr. Riggs. And I wanna, before I make my comment, I just wanna thank the entire board. Um, what we did was, um, this was very difficult because we couldn't talk in person. We had to go through Google Meet or, or Zoom as we're doing now. But um, so I divided the board into group two, two groups of three so that they could talk and hash over the budget. And I'll tell you, all six of you, um, I really appreciate all your efforts towards this budget. Um, Dr. Clark, Dr. Uh, Mr. DeGeorge, Mr. Decker, thank you for putting everything together. And I think my biggest question, anytime there were cuts listed, was is this going to affect our students? Is this gonna hurt our students? And the answer to those questions were no. So I am voting yes for this budget and I'm supporting the budget. Do I agree that this is a bad time? Absolutely, but we are gonna have schools in September and we are gonna have students which are also citizens of this town. And I think it's very important that they have a good solid school when they come back, hopefully September. And I too would like to thank all the staff, national teachers and staff week. Uh, we appreciate everything you do. At that, could I have a motion? Oh, Dr. Clark or Mr. DeGeorge, Mr. Decker, do you wanna say anything before we close? I see two heads shaking. I'm good, thanks for asking. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Thanks. could I have a motion then for adjournment? Motion. motion. Second. Okay, Skip and Donna. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting, meeting adjourned. Stay well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Stay safe. I'd like to yes. thank all the public for attending. Thank you.